Um, there's a lot to talk about in the context of um, in the context of uh, the, the the president of Harvard, um, uh, Claudine Gay's resignation. We've talked a little bit about this, but um, I'm inspired today by uh, TGIF. Uh, uh, TGIF is uh, the Friday publication of uh, the Free Press. This is Barry Weiss's uh, a, a project uh, called the Free Press. Um, I'm going to use it extensively today. So uh, before you accuse me of plagiarism, I, I will. I'm, I'm admitting that I'm going to read to you passages out of. TGIF. Generally, TGIF is written by Nellie Bowles, who is married to Barry Weiss. Um, and Nellie is a really good writer. And uh, so I highly recommend TGIF. She's really funny. Highly recommend the Free Press, Barry Weiss's publication. In particular, I love their Friday summary of the news. It's funny. It's entertaining. And it's usually right on. I don't agree with everything they write, but, but it's usually right on. Anyway, they, 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 they've dedicated a lot of space here to uh, Claudia, uh, Claudine Gay's um, uh, resignation that happened this week, earlier this week. We've talked about it already, but it's worth kind of summarizing and emphasizing certain points. She has written, um, Gay has written a, a, uh, an op-ed uh, for the New York Times um, uh, where she, you know, she's trying to, justify her actions. She never apologizes for anything. Her, her plagiarism is just, uh, is just a witch hunt. Um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the whole thing with the, um, uh, with the testimony in front of the house committee, uh, she fell into a prosecutional trap and, and, uh, the trap, you know, she, 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 she fell into it innocently, uh, and of course, she says in the op-ed, uh, you know, I'm, I'm against violence against Jews. Of course, I'm against, um, uh, you know, a genocidal chance and, and, I, uh, uh, and I would have protected Jews. Of course, this is a, a president of a university who did not uh, say anything after October 7th, did not condemn what Hamas had done. Uh, she was very quick to condemn the killing of George Floyd or oh, Harvard was anyway. She wasn't the president at the time, uh, and and support for BLS. But but God forbid uh, you say anything uh, about the, uh, the 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 slaughter, rape, and torture of people on October seventh. Uh, in particular, uh, she was very slow in responding, and really weak and slow in responding uh, to the thirty plus thirty three, I think it was, student organizations that on October eighth already expressed support for Hamas what they did on October 7th. Um, but, but she's innocent, and, 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 uh, and, and of course, you know, she is, uh, uh, she is not as supportive of Jewish genocide, and of course, she would uh, defend Jewish students, and of course, um, all of this uh, is a witch hunt against her, basically motivated by racial animus, Right? Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, she, uh, she is just, she is just a, a, the first black, uh, to be president of the university. She's the second woman, I think that's right, to be president of the university. And that's why they went after. It's all racism and sexism. Now, what she doesn't tell you is the extent of her plagiarism which has been well documented in the press and you can find it all over the place. But this woman basically copy-pasted whole paragraphs, even her acknowledgments. There's a section of her acknowledgement that's a copy-paste job. <laughs> now, I wouldn't fire anybody for that, but that, that shows you how absurd what she did. Over half of her publications have substantial plagiarism in it. Now, suddenly... Plagiarism is not a big deal. Suddenly, plagiarism is, is just, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, this is Associate Press, one of our, you know, deliverers of news. They had this headline. Harvard president's resignation highlights new, quote, conservative weapon against colleges, plagiarism. 
it's a weapon. <laughs> really? I mean, plagiarism is something you, you know, kick a student out of a class for, sometimes kick him out of the university for, certainly give him an F for. Now, you know, somebody misquotes or somebody misreferences or somebody a sentence here, a sentence there, oh, you know, okay. We're talking about a whole paragraphs, verbatim, with no reference. You know, uh, uh, there's an accusation of plagiarism against, um, oh, uh, what's his name, the hedge fund guy who, who went after Harvard. His wife is now accused of plagiarism. What is her plagiarism? There's a paragraph there which she references the source of, it's verbatim, she references, but she forgot in the publication to put quote marks around it. But she, she references where she got the text exactly from. Not something Claudine Gay does when she plagiarizes. And now, Bill Ackerman, um, Ackerman's wife. And now, it's the same thing. And if you're going to go after plagiarism, I, I mean, no shame. No shame. What Claudine Gay did is inexcusable in terms of the plagiarism. It is unprofessional. It is a travesty from, from, for an academic. To do something like this, she should have lost her job. Now here, she lost her job as president. She maintains a $900,000 a year salary. Let me say that again, $900,000 a year salary. Just so you know where your tuition payments and your tax money to pay for student loans, all that money ultimately goes. Oh, you're, those of you who are giving money uh, uh, to, uh, to endowments, to your alma mater, $900,000. She will continue uh, as a faculty member. A faculty member who half of her publications on which she got tenure are plagiarized, have, have significant plagiarism in there. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Uh, Nate Silver, uh, uh, Nate Silver uh, I think he tweeted this, he says, Pretty worried, and this is Nate Silver, who's a leftist, center left, right? Nate Silver uh, writes, pretty worried about this new chrono weapon um, that can force you to go back as many as 27 years in time and commit plagiarism. <laughs> um, conservative weapon against colleges, plagiarism. You either commit plagiarism or you don't. And plagiarism has been a sin in academia, if you will, forever. It's not new. It, it wasn't discovered in order to apply to Claudine Gay. It's been applied to many, many people over many, many years. And it certainly applies to students. And it certainly applied to students at Harvard, where she was president. Tzvika, thank you, $100. Wow, that's amazing. That's a sticker for Tzvika, Silvanos, thank you, and Roosevelt, thank you. Thank you to all the, the stickers, really, really appreciate that. We're still about, yep. All right, let's see. And then um, Ibrahim Kendi, you know, you remember Ibrahim Kendi, the guy who had this massive center um, uh, devoted to, uh, to his, uh, his anti-racist ideas and who the money for the center somehow got used somewhere, somehow. I mean, I, I, you know, and all kinds of stuff that nobody quite understands and knows, and they produced really nothing. Anyway, he is uh, convinced that uh, the ouster of gay is all the work of a racist mob. A racist mob, right? Um, now, note that uh, this racist mob also went after the president of the University of Pennsylvania, and the University of Pennsylvania president resigned way before Claudine Gay. And the University of Pennsylvania president didn't commit plagiarism. She was forced to resign just for her response to the October 7th and a response to the hearing in front of Congress. That was enough to get her basically fired. Claudine Gay, that wouldn't have got her fired, it appears. What got her fired is that plus a heavy dose of plagiarism. 
Now, note that in a kind of rational world in which our media was actually doing its work, the plagiarism would have actually come from the media. That is, the media would have uh, discovered it and brought it to the fore. That's what the media does, right? It's supposed to do. Search and, 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 and find corruption in the background. So the media, um, the media is defending Colonial Gang. The media is the one that claims that plagiarism is a right-wing conspiracy. The real hero here, the, the, the person who actually did the work, who actually figured all this out and revealed the truth about, um, uh, about Claudine Gay, is not, is not a, a media uh, person per se, uh, but a, 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 somebody who works for the uh, Manhattan Institute, an intellectual who works for the Manhattan Institute, Institute and has a, has a uh, Twitter account, uh, Chris Rufo. Chris Rufo is the guy who actually uh, did this uh, uh, and, 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 and publicized it and made a big deal and, and really pushed this. Um, uh, Rufo, as Rufo puts it, <laughs> quote, the funniest outcome of the Claudine Gay saga is all the academics coming out in defense of plagiarism and all of the journalists coming out against journalism. Tell with facts, tell with digging, tell with discovering what's really going on, and tell with plagiarism. What matters is that Gay was black and a woman and the president of Harvard. And that supersedes everything, right? She's the oppressed. And the oppressed are allowed to commit plagiarism. The oppressed are allowed to say really stupid things in front of Congress. The oppressed are allowed to support other oppressed, Hamas. It's no surprise that the president of University of Pennsylvania was fired. She's white and therefore, by definition, an oppressor. Oh, not, not huge oppressor, right? Because she's also a woman, so she gets some oppressed credit. But gay is both a woman and black. Now, if she was gay, I mean, gay gay, then, I mean, there's no way she could have been fired, right? Because she would have been at the, at the, at the, at the at, at, you know, the most oppressed you could be, I guess. Or, or maybe trans would have been even better than that. Um, you're seeing, I mean, what's happened over the last few months, I mean, really uh, over the last few years, but you're really seeing it intensely over the last few months. Um, is the complete corruption of the far left and the, the real manifestation of what intersectionality really means and how it plays out. We've been talking about this a lot, right? Uh, we've been, you know, talking about this idea that if you're, if you're part of the intersectional oppressed category, then you can pretty much do anything, including murder, rape, pillage, torture, and you can get away with it. And if you're part of the oppressor class, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how much you grovel, you're always guilty. You're always guilty. Even if you're the one being raped, pillaged, and murdered, you're always the guilty one. Matt Egan on CNN uh, 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 said, quote, we should note, this is often the... Uh, TGIF from FP.com. Uh, we should note that Claudine Gay has not been accused of stealing anyone's ideas in any of her writings. She's been accused of, sort of, more like copying other people's writings without attribution. <laughs> I mean, sort of copying other people's ideas without attribution? <laughs> I mean, what is that? And that's sort of, that's, we don't consider that a crime. You know, that's not a bad thing. You tell that to students. You tell that to other academics who actually do this honestly and do their work properly. It's just the left is falling over one another 
in order to find ways to justify her, to justify her behavior, and to um, and to excuse it.